Okay, for our experiment, uh, we're going to use a Seek thermal imager, which will detect uh, kind of like Predator. Ever seen Predator? The thermal imaging outline of the uh, the glass and the film on it. A TES-133 solar power meter and a Ryobi temp gun. So this is a sample of the 3M Prestige 60 Sun Control film that I'll be testing on the uh, sliding door here. So if you're interested in doing this testing yourself, I'll put a link in the description below for all the items that I'm using in my test. This will be a kind of an example of how different uh, meters or devices are used to, to measure energy. So right now I got this stove, it's pretty damn hot. Probably hotter than this thing can read, so 592 degrees. The temp gun will measure it. It measures the, the, the surface temperature, the, I guess the energy on the surface here, the surface temperature. But here I can turn off the stove, so now it's off. Still 500 degrees. Now if I use a BTU meter, this shouldn't measure any BTU energy. And it doesn't. But I've just shown that this thing is pretty much hot as hell. Well, this thing only measures the solar energy coming in. So there's different forms of energy. So here, obviously, I can twist this many different ways. It's not registering any BTUs. But if you were to sit in this room for a while, you can definitely feel it heat up. So it measures two different types of energy. So the solar energy that comes into your house is measured with this. Once it strikes up, once it strikes something and becomes absorbed, then you can measure it with this. Well, obviously it says air, it's too damn hot. Um, so that, that's the concept. Solar energy will turn into a different form when it gets absorbed, and that's what you're, you're, you're feeling when you're standing in the sun or you're standing in front of your window. That's the absorption of the solar energy. So there's two different ways to measure it and the two different types of things that are kind of happening inside the house. So here's another great example. We already took the stove, we know it's hot over here, so I'm not gonna go through that again. But I can take my same BTU meter, and I got, I got the light on over the stove, and lo and behold, you're getting BTU ratings from the light. So it's specifically designed to measure solar radiation I call it light energy. Okay, today we wanted to see if the 3M sun control window film lives up to its name. The most important thing that we want to look at is the total energy rejected, which shows roughly about 53%. And this is the 60 series, which I believe is not the darkest, but it's not the lightest either. And then the glass that we got it on, we have a generic, um, old, went old uh, sliding door window, it's about 18 years old, there's no window uh, treatment on the outside, no solar films, no anything, so this is just a bare window. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to be able to take um, a transmission percentage, how much light actually comes through that window and is converted to heat. So we were able to buy a TES 1333 meter off of Amazon, and this uh, actually measures the amount of BTUs, which you can see here, that comes through that window. So that's the amount of heat that actually gets brought in to the space from the sun. So we're gonna go on one side of the window here. I'm a, it's not an exact science here, but I'm gonna try and measure how much, at the maximum angle here, how much sunlight actually comes in. So we're looking roughly at about 180, 181, BTUs that are coming into the space. So if we move over to the film, you can see that the BTUs from the light that comes into the space is significantly reduced. Now it's at a roughly about 42, 40, 42 um, BTUs per foot per hour. So when you look at the label, it, yes it does, it lives up to its name and it, it blocks 53% at least of light BTUs that are coming into the space, so roughly 180, and then you move over to the film, and that's uh, 42, 43. So it does do its job 
according to blocking the blocking the light. So the other test we want to do to see, you know, is it blocking the thermal energy that's coming through the window from the sun, which it obviously appears it's doing, but also is it is it adding any additional heat to the the glass plane? And so we're going to use a, a Ryobi, which I bought off of Amazon, to measure the heat that's coming out of this, or if there's any heat coming out of this thermal film. So we can see as we take a thermal measurement of the film, we're at roughly about 115 degrees. Then if we pan down here to the window with no film, it's about 104 degrees. Go up, it's about 114, 115. Go down about 105. So we're looking about a 10 degree difference between the film and the window. So does it block all the heat completely? No, because it appears that the film itself heats up. So if the film's heating up, then it's also radiating heat into the space. So the jury's out on if this is completely a 53% total energy rejection due to the amount of energy it's now radiating into the house from the film heating up. So this is a thermal view of the sliding glass door with the sample solar film attached and you can see here it's a little bit later in the day <clears throat> it's 109 degrees on the solar film and about 97 ish on the window so it's still you still have a 10 degree roughly differential between the two, so that the film is definitely heating up. There's there's no way around that. And I kind of expected the film to not heat up as much, which is causing, I think, the house to heat up. We're outside, we're measuring the solar radiation that we're getting from the sun. And we're looking at the end of June, about 275 or so, and the windows uh, letting about 180 in due to some reflection and refraction of the, light on the, of the glass surface. So, it's a lot of heat that's coming in from the sun into the space. Right. So this is a snapshot of my window without the thermal imaging function on and now I've got the thermal imaging function on and you can see the difference between um, the non-thermal image and obviously the thermal image and then later I'm going to show here what the inside temperature of the window is and this was kind of shocking to me so it's 108 degrees on the outside of the window with the sun beating down on it and if you look on the inside it's 122 degrees so that film has literally heated up to 122 degrees it's, it's hotter on the inside of the window than it is on the outside of the window which kind of defeats the purpose Okay, so one of the reasons I think the solar film is not working is the fact that what it's actually doing is it's absorbing the solar energy from the sun and instead of uh, actually allowing it to transmit into the house, it's supposed to absorb it. So anything that's black obviously absorbs heat, but the problem is it has no way to get rid of that heat. So what happens is as the, the sun's coming in, it blocks it right here, but the problem is now the film heats up. So what happens um, when the film gets hot is the cold air down here starts to rise due to convection and as it rises up it actually makes a convective loop. The hot air rises, the cold air comes back in to, to fill it up here, then that gets hot, rises and it keeps on doing that to infinity so to speak and continually heats my house. So it does block the solar radiation or the solar energy coming into the house but the problem is due to convect, convective looping the house heats up anyway so all it does is basically like I said the air just comes up through the window heats the air and then the air heats the house so it's great in the winter but it sucks in the summer so the 3M solar films 
do very little to block any kind of radiant energy that's coming in your house to heat it up. Um, so I wouldn't really recommend buying them. I bought them for the fact that they'd, they'd block UV rays and I also thought that they'd block the amount of energy that would come in to drop it maybe 20% or anything's better than nothing. But really it's, they, they done, they've done very little in my house. Here's the uh, window with the 3M film on it. So I'm comparing that to uh, the other windows. They also have 3M film on them, all four of them, except for um, I've got the solar shades or the solar shades down on the other three. And so it's about, I don't know, about five o'clock on the west side of my house and about 91, 92 degrees outside. So here's a thermal gun. It looks like this window is registering about 134 degrees on the inside of the window. And so if you go over to the uh, cellular shade, I don't know if you can see this is a little bit blacked out. It's about 100. So here, the window is about 134. The space around it with this little uh, temperature meter, it's about 100 degrees. So let me go to the outside and I'll shoot the glass there. Okay, so we're on the outside. Temp gun, 119. So literally the inside of the glass, 129, is hotter than the outside of the glass. And so here's the uh, kind of windowsill temp measure. So back to the inside of the window. Um, so my results for my house when I had this installed, um, I was assuming that it's going to significantly reduce the heat load, which it did not. It does do a good job of blocking the, the UV rays, but as you can see, the, the thermal uh, film, the window is hotter on the inside than it is on the outside. So I think the film relies on the fact that it heats up, it absorbs all the solar energy coming in and then it's trying to use the window as a heat sink but it does a very poor job of that so if you want to actually reduce the heat gain in your house the amount of heat that's coming into your house forcing your air conditioner to run longer don't get 3m films get solar shades or cellular shades or whatever you want to call them these are what actually block the heat the 3m film in my opinion for my house did absolutely nothing so if you want to get the 3m film uh, do so at your own risk uh, for the cost that they actually charge you to put them in each window is about a hundred bucks to put the film in it's probably cheaper just to get a new window with low e uh, coating and um, argon glass and all that good stuff inside the glass the, the 3m film really doesn't do a whole lot for heat rejection in my opinion so the next couple tests are from a glass manufacturer that left their glass samples at my house for review. This first glass is double pane with no low E coatings. The second glass is double pane with a single low E coating on the front. The third is double glass or sorry, double pane with dual low E coatings. And the fourth is just insulation side of the glass. So you can all take a reference of how much energy is being passed through all four pieces of glass. And all, all the glasses have argon inside the glass. And here's the straight up solar from the sun. So you can see there's a significant uh, reduction in... Okay, here we're doing this a little bit backwards. This is the, the fourth sample. It's got insulation in it. And the next one will be the dual low E coating. And it's going to be hotter because it's it's rejecting the heat from coming into the glass and reflecting it out. So that surface of the back part of the glass will get hot. This is a single low E coating. The back part of the glass is cooler. The front will be hotter because it's rejecting it through the front. So this is exactly what you want for the summer if you have a if you have a summer house. And here, uh, this has no low E coating whatsoever. Both sides of the window are really cool, but if you remember back from the BTU measurement. The BTU measurement was somewhere in the, the 200, so it was letting all this energy through. And so the more energy you block, usually the, the hotter the glass will be. Not always, but most of the case, at least here what you're seeing here. So here I'm panning back over to the 
fourth window here with the insulation in it and it's fairly hot and then as we move slowly over to the third one with the double low E coating on the right hand side here it's significant, significantly hotter it's um, rejecting heat from both both directions but in this case the most of the the sun's striking here so it's it's going to reflect that heat back through the glass and the glass is going to heat up a little bit uh, this is the, the single low E coating the, the, the glass is not as hot as a the double low E coating but it's still hotter and here again no coating whatsoever glass is really cold but it's letting in all the heat the glass is not absorbing anything the house is okay to note these again 3M films were professionally installed by a 3M distributor or an installer or whatever you want to call it and as you look online some of the videos that, that show how they put various pieces of glass with tinting on them and whatnot in between a uh, chocolate bar or whatever else they put ice cream and they can watch it melt versus the, the glass that doesn't have um, any coating on it is somewhat deceptive and the fact that it doesn't use or take into consideration any convective looping that occurs with the, uh, the chocolate bar or the ice cream and it doesn't show how the, the cold air is kind of coming in and heating up with the film and then rising up that that heat doesn't touch the candy bar or the ice cream so to make a real good example of that it needs to be put into a box and then the, the, the box needs to show the temperature of the of the of the space with the film versus without the film and then show the candy bar or ice cream experiment so those are my thoughts um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you like it, please subscribe and I'll put more similar content out. Alright, there's my review. Hopefully this will help somebody when they're buying windows or films or solar shades to help reduce your energy costs.